Greetings. In this series, we are going to look at mathematics from around the world. Math is a subject that is studied around the world by various peoples and has involvement in culture at various levels. We have images used as artwork from geometry, and we have geometries that were studied because someone was looking for one thing, discovered another, and then that was applied to something else. In this series, we want to look at mathematics from around the world and the various things that connect us as a people in a beautiful creation. I hope you enjoy Worldwide Mathematics. With this episode of Worldwide Mathematics, we visit our last naturally inhabited continent, and our focus will be on the indigenous peoples. And we're looking at Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, and we are looking at their counting system. Looking at these groups, we see that there has been some misrepresentation of their counting ability or their understanding of enumerating. And so I want to look at these groups and talk about a few things about the way that they count and how that relates to other counting systems. Uh, my primary source material for these groups is uh, work done by John Harris. Uh, native knowledge from these groups has been ignored it's been corrupted through replacement with English words, and it's been distorted by research. Uh, for some reason, some researchers have wanted to say that uh, some of these groups have limited counting ability or enumerating ability. Uh, some have said that they lack the ability to count beyond two or three. Some have argued that there is no numbers above three. In the Kokata Guada language of Western South Australia, uh, it's been known by researchers for a long time that there is an ability to count from one to five. Uh, another language, the Anindil Yaka of Groti Island uh, is known to be able to count from 1 to 20. Uh, in Chijat Wurong, it can be shown that there's an ability to count to 100. Uh, it's also been shown that uh, within one of these language groups that uh, natives are, uh, when they count, able to count in bundles, and so they can produce large numbers of items like spears. Uh, say if they needed 150 spears, they would bundle in groups of 20, and then they could have a certain number of those, and then the difference between the number they're trying to get and the multiple of 20. And so we see that grouping happen there. There's been discussions by some of prehistoric uh, number ideas, uh, being binary systems within some of these language groups and um, it's we probably should look at these uh, not as binary which seems to be inappropriately attributed to these people groups but they're probably quinary or better um, five is usually important in a lot of numerical development because we have five digits on our hand and so we see some similar ideas in some of these people groups and so we should have quinary or uh, multiples of five in our number based systems that we look at. Uh, our anthropological mathematical history uh, should reflect uh, these truths and separate uh, 
from any false information uh, or prejudices that has been shown in academic areas in the past. We need to rectify our understanding here and not look at these people groups as missing something that they really in fact have. John Harris has stated, Aboriginal people were not incapable of handling numbers. Another thing he points out is that we should have a proper definition of counting. And with that being established, we should maintain these in our academic discussions where they occur. Uh, he thinks perhaps some of the ways that some of the anthropologists or other researchers have looked at uh, indigenous peoples when they study them, that maybe they're not using a good definition of counting. Um, to to get an idea of what they're viewing versus expectations. Um, if you look at ideas where you have um, limited samples or you're ignoring data, then you can see where some people might think a binary system might develop or trinary or something like that. If we look at... Um, some traditional Chinese numerical systems. Um, there are four traditional systems as discussed in Clausen's book. And uh, one of the systems is also talked about in Blitzer's book. They look, um, both of them talk about the basic system, but there's also a commercial system. There is a stick system and there's an official system. For numbering. If you look at some of these, you will see there's some basic properties. They're, they're either horizontal or vertical lines for uh, numbers one, two, and three. Uh, but as you get to number four, you get a definite change. So as we look at this traditional system, we see that we could have one, two, three, and then, if this is the limit of what we research, or since we expect this to have a limited system, then we just take this as confirmation for our bias, and we go on to report that this is a limited system. But then you get to number four in this system, and the number looks much more complex. This is the number four. It changes pattern at this point. If you look at one of the other systems, you see that this is number four in that system. And so if we just limit ourselves to small sample sizes, then uh, we might miss something. Uh, if there is some kind of pre-assumed understanding when we look at these systems, we could also run ourselves into problems as well. We should be careful about our assumptions when we do research, uh, when we evaluate things around us, when we look at logic, and uh, certainly when we do mathematics. If you try to do a proof and you have the wrong assumptions and you're not aware of those assumptions, you're probably going to have difficulty with that proof. Um, hopefully you're finding something in mathematics to enjoy in your part of the world. Cheerful calculations.